The Arctic Ocean is the smallest and shallowest of the world's five major oceans. The International Hydrographic Organization (IHO) recognizes it as an ocean, although some oceanographers call it the Arctic Mediterranean Sea or simply the Arctic Sea, classifying it a Mediterranean Sea or an estuary of the Atlantic Ocean. It is also seen as the northernmost part of the all-encompassing world ocean. Located mostly in the Arctic North Polar region in the middle of the northern hemisphere, the Arctic Ocean is almost completely surrounded by Eurasia and North America. It is partly covered by sea ice throughout the year and almost completely in winter. The Arctic Ocean's surface temperature and salinity vary seasonally as the ice cover melts and freezes, its salinity is the lowest on average of the five major oceans, due to low evaporation, heavy fresh water inflow from rivers and streams, and limited connection and outflow to surrounding oceanic waters with higher salinities. The summer shrinking of the ice has been quoted at 50%. The U.S. National Snow and Ice Data Center NSIDC uses satellite data to provide a daily record of Arctic sea ice cover and the rate of melting compared to an average period and specific past years. History Human habitation in the North American polar region goes back at least 50,000 to 17,000 years ago, during the Wisconsin glaciation. At this time, falling sea levels allowed people to move across the Bering Land Bridge that joined Siberia to northwest North America Alaska, leading to the settlement of the Americas. Paleo-Eskimo groups included the pre-Dorset c. 3200-850 BC, the Sakak culture of Greenland 2500-800 BC, the Independence I and Independence II cultures of northeastern Canada and Greenland c. 2400-1800 BC and c. 800-1 BC, the Groswater of Labrador and Nunavik, and the Dorset culture 500 BC to 1500 AD, which spread across Arctic North America. The Dorset were the last major Paleo-Eskimo culture in the Arctic before the migration east from present-day Alaska of the Thule, the ancestors of the modern Inuit. The Thule tradition lasted from about 200 BC to 1600 AD around the Bering Strait, the Thule people being the prehistoric ancestors of the Inuit who now live in northern Labrador. For much of European history, the North Polar regions remained largely unexplored and their geography conjectural. Pythias of Massilia recorded an account of a journey northward in 325 BC, to a land he called Eskit Thule, where the sun only set for three hours each day and the water was replaced by a congealed substance, on which one can neither walk nor sail. He was probably describing loose sea ice known today as growlers, or bergy bits. His Thule was probably Norway, though the Faroe Islands or Shetland have also been suggested. Early cartographers were unsure whether to draw the region around the North Pole as land as in Johannes Reich's map of 1507, or Gerardus Mercator's map of 1595 or water as with Martin Waldseemuller's world map of 1507. The fervent desire of European merchants for a northern passage, the Northern Sea Route or the Northwest Passage, to Cathay. China caused water to win out, and by 1723 mapmakers such as Johann Hohmann featured an extensive Oceanus Septentrionalis at the northern edge of their charts. The few expeditions to penetrate much beyond the Arctic Circle in this era added only small islands, such as Novaya Zemlya 11th century and Spitsbergen 1596, though since these were often surrounded by pack ice, their northern limits were not so clear. The makers of navigational charts, more conservative than some of the more fanciful cartographers, tended to leave the region blank, with only fragments of known coastline sketched in. This lack of knowledge of what lay north of the shifting barrier of ice gave rise to a number of conjectures. In England and other European nations, the myth of an open polar sea was persistent. John Barrow, longtime second secretary of the British Admiralty, promoted exploration of the region from 1818 to 1845 in search of this. In the United States in the 1850s and 1860s, the explorers Elisha Kane and Isaac Israel Hayes both claimed to have seen part of this elusive body of water. Even quite late in the century, the eminent authority Matthew Fontaine Maury included a description of the open polar sea in his textbook The Physical Geography of the Sea 1883. Nevertheless, as all the explorers who traveled closer and closer to the pole reported, the polar ice cap is quite thick, and persists year-round. 
Fridtjof Nansen was the first to make a nautical crossing of the Arctic Ocean, in 1896. The first surface crossing of the ocean was led by Wally Herbert in 1969, in a dog sled expedition from Alaska to Svalbard, with air support. The first nautical transit of the North Pole was made in 1958 by the submarine USS Nautilus, and the first surface nautical transit occurred in 1977 by the icebreaker NS Arktika. Since 1937, Soviet and Russian manned drifting ice stations have extensively monitored the Arctic Ocean. Scientific settlements were established on the drift ice and carried thousands of kilometers by ice flows. In World War II, the European region of the Arctic Ocean was heavily contested. The Allied commitment to resupply the Soviet Union via its northern ports was opposed by German naval and air forces. Since 1954, commercial airlines have flown over the Arctic Ocean. See polar route. Topic: Geography. The Arctic Ocean occupies a roughly circular basin and covers an area of about 14,056,000 square kilometers, 5,427,000 square miles, almost the size of Antarctica. The coastline is 45,390 kilometers, 28,200 miles long. It is surrounded by the land masses of Eurasia, North America, Greenland, and by several islands. It is generally taken to include Baffin Bay, Barents Sea, Beaufort Sea, Chukchi Sea, East Siberian Sea, Greenland Sea, Hudson Bay, Hudson Strait, Kara Sea, Laptev Sea, White Sea and other tributary bodies of water. It is connected to the Pacific Ocean by the Bering Strait and to the Atlantic Ocean through the Greenland Sea and Labrador Sea. Countries bordering the Arctic Ocean are, Russia, Norway, Iceland, Greenland, Canada and the United States. Topic. Extent and major ports Topic. There are several ports and harbors around the Arctic Ocean Topic. United States Topic. In Alaska, the main ports are Barrow 71 degrees 17 minutes 44 seconds north 156 degrees 45 minutes 59 seconds west and Prudhoe Bay 70 degrees 19 minutes 32 seconds north 148 degrees 42 minutes 41 seconds west. Topic. Canada Topic. In Canada, ships may anchor at Churchill, Port of Churchill, 58 degrees 46 minutes 28 seconds north 094 degree 11 feet 37 inches W in Manitoba, Nanasivik, Nanasivik Naval Facility, 73 degrees 04 08 and 084 degree 32 feet 57 inches W in Nunavut, Tuktoyaktuk, 69 degrees 26 minutes 34 seconds north 133 degrees 01 52 W or Inuvik, 68 degrees 21 minutes 42 seconds north 133 degrees 43 minutes 50 seconds west in the Northwest Territories. Topic. Greenland Topic. In Greenland, the main port is at Nuuk, Nuuk Port and Harbor, 64 degrees 10 minutes 15 seconds north 051 degree 43 feet 15 inches W. Topic. Norway Topic In Norway Kirkenes 69 degrees 43 minutes 37 seconds north 030 degree 02 44 E and Vardo 70 degrees 22 minutes 14 seconds north 031 degree 06 27 E are ports on the mainland also, there is Longyearbyen, 78 degrees 13 minutes 12 seconds north, 15 degrees 39 00 e on Svalbard, a Norwegian archipelago, next to Fram Strait. Topic: Russia. Topic: In Russia, major ports sorted by the different sea areas are. Murmansk 68 degrees 58 in 033 degree 05 e in the Barents Sea Arkhangelsk 64 degrees 32 in 040 degree 32 e in the White Sea 
Labaitnangi 66 degrees 39 minutes 26 seconds north 066 degree 25 06 E Salikherd 66 degrees 32 and 066 degree 36 E Dudinka 69 degrees 24 and 086 degree 11 E Igarka 67 degrees 28 and 86 degrees 35 E and Dixon 73 degrees 30 and 080 degree 31 E in the Karasi Tixi 71 degrees 38 and 128 degrees 52 E in the Laptevsi Pevik 69 degrees 42 and 170 degrees 17 E in the East Siberian Sea Topic Arctic shelves Topic the ocean's Arctic shelf comprises a number of continental shelves, including the Canadian Arctic shelf, underlying the Canadian Arctic archipelago, and the Russian continental shelf, which is sometimes simply called the Arctic shelf, because it is greater in extent. The Russian continental shelf consists of three separate, smaller shelves, the Barents Shelf, Chukchi Sea Shelf and Siberian Shelf. Of these three, the Siberian Shelf is the largest such shelf in the world. The Siberian shelf holds large oil and gas reserves, and the Chukchi shelf forms the border between Russian and the United States as stated in the USSR-USA Maritime Boundary Agreement. The whole area is subject to international territorial claims. <laughs> <laughs> Underwater features an underwater ridge, the Lomonosov Ridge, divides the Deep Sea North Polar Basin into two oceanic basins, the Eurasian Basin, which is between 4,000 and 4,500 meters and feet deep, and the Amerasian Basin, sometimes called the North American, or Hyperborean Basin, which is about 4,000 meters feet deep. The bathymetry of the ocean bottom is marked by fault block ridges, abyssal plains, ocean deeps, and basins. The average depth of the Arctic Ocean is 1,038 meters (3,406 feet). The deepest point is Litki Deep in the Eurasian Basin at 5,450 meters (17,880 feet). The two major basins are further subdivided by ridges into the Canada Basin between Alaska, Canada, and the Alpha Ridge, Makarov Basin between the Alpha and Lomonosov ridges, Amundsen Basin between Lomonosov and Gokul ridges, and Nansen Basin between the Gokul Ridge and the continental shelf that includes the Franz Josef Land. Topic: <laughs> Oceanography. Topic. Water flow In large parts of the Arctic Ocean, the top layer about 50 meters 160 feet is of lower salinity and lower temperature than the rest. It remains relatively stable, because the salinity effect on density is bigger than the temperature effect. It is fed by the freshwater input of the big Siberian and Canadian streams Ob, Yenise, Lena, Mackenzie, the water of which quasi floats on the saltier, denser, deeper ocean water. Between this lower salinity layer and the bulk of the ocean lies the so-called halocline, in which both salinity and temperature are rising with increasing depth. Because of its relative isolation from other oceans, the Arctic Ocean has a uniquely complex system of water flow. It is classified as a Mediterranean Sea, which is a part of the world ocean which has only limited communication with the major ocean basins these being the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans and where the circulation is dominated by thermohaline forcing. The Arctic Ocean has a total volume of 18.07 times 106 cubic kilometers, equal to about 1.3% of the world ocean. Mean surface circulation is predominantly cyclonic on the Eurasian side and anticyclonic in the Canadian basin. Water enters from both the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and can be divided into three unique water masses. The deepest water mass is called Arctic bottom water and begins around 900 meters (3000 feet) depth. It is composed of the densest water in the world ocean and has two main sources: Arctic shelf water and Greenland sea deep water. Water in the shelf region that begins as inflow from the Pacific passes through the narrow Bering Strait at an average rate of 0.8 Sverdrups and reaches the Chukchi Sea. During the winter, cold Alaskan winds blow over the Chukchi Sea, freezing the surface water and pushing this newly formed ice out to the Pacific. 
The speed of the ice drift is roughly 1 to 4 cm per second. This process leaves dense, salty waters in the sea that sink over the continental shelf into the western Arctic Ocean and create a halocline. This water is met by Greenland Sea deep water, which forms during the passage of winter storms. As temperatures cool dramatically in the winter, ice forms and intense vertical convection allows the water to become dense enough to sink below the warm saline water below. Arctic bottom water is critically important because of its outflow, which contributes to the formation of Atlantic deep water. The overturning of this water plays a key role in global circulation and the moderation of climate. In the depth range of 150 to 900 meters 490 to 2950 feet is a water mass referred to as Atlantic water. Inflow from the North Atlantic Current enters through the Fram Strait, cooling and sinking to form the deepest layer of the halocline, where it circles the Arctic Basin counter-clockwise. This is the highest volumetric inflow to the Arctic Ocean, equaling about ten times that of the Pacific inflow, and it creates the Arctic Ocean boundary current. It flows slowly, at about 0.02 meters per second. Atlantic water has the same salinity as Arctic bottom water but is much warmer up to 3 degrees Celsius. In fact, this water mass is actually warmer than the surface water, and remains submerged only due to the role of salinity in density. When water reaches the basin it is pushed by strong winds into a large circular current called the Beaufort Gyre. Water in the Beaufort Gyre is far less saline than that of the Chukchi Sea due to inflow from large Canadian and Siberian rivers. The final defined water mass in the Arctic Ocean is called Arctic surface water and is found from 150 to 200 meters (490 to 660 feet). The most important feature of this water mass is a section referred to as the subsurface layer. It is a product of Atlantic water that enters through canyons and is subjected to intense mixing on the Siberian shelf. As it is entrained, it cools and acts a heat shield for the surface layer. This insulation keeps the warm Atlantic water from melting the surface ice. Additionally, this water forms the swiftest currents of the Arctic, with speed of around 0.3 to 0.6 meters per second. Complementing the water from the canyons, some Pacific water that does not sink to the shelf region after passing through the Bering Strait also contributes to this water mass. Waters originating in the Pacific and Atlantic both exit through the Fram Strait between Greenland and Svalbard Island, which is about 2,700 meters (8,900 feet) deep and 350 kilometers (220 miles) wide. This outflow is about nine sieverts. The width of the Fram Strait is what allows for both inflow and outflow on the Atlantic side of the Arctic Ocean. Because of this, it is influenced by the Coriolis force, which concentrates outflow to the East Greenland current on the western side and inflow to the Norwegian current on the eastern side. Pacific water also exits along the west coast of Greenland and the Hudson Strait, one to two sieverts, providing nutrients to the Canadian archipelago. As noted, the process of ice formation and movement is a key driver in Arctic Ocean circulation and the formation of water masses. With this dependence, the Arctic Ocean experiences variations due to seasonal changes in sea ice cover. Sea ice movement is the result of wind forcing, which is related to a number of meteorological conditions that the Arctic experiences throughout the year. For example, the Beaufort High—an extension of the Siberian High System—is a pressure system that drives the anticyclonic motion of the Beaufort Gyre. During the summer, this area of high pressure is pushed out closer to its Siberian and Canadian sides. In addition, there is a sea level pressure SLP ridge over Greenland that drives strong northerly winds through the Fram Strait, facilitating ice export. In the summer, the SLP contrast is smaller, producing weaker winds. A final example of seasonal pressure system movement is the low pressure system that exists over the Nordic and Barents Seas. It is an extension of the Icelandic low, which creates cyclonic ocean circulation in this area. The low shifts to center over the North Pole in the summer. These variations in the Arctic all contribute to ice drift reaching its weakest point during the summer months. There is also evidence that the drift is associated with the phase of the Arctic Oscillation and Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation. Sea ice. Topic. Much of the Arctic Ocean is covered by sea ice that varies in extent and thickness seasonally. 
The mean extent of the ice has been decreasing since 1980 from the average winter value of 15,600,000 square kilometers, 6,023,200 square miles at a rate of 3% per decade. The seasonal variations are about 7 million square kilometers, 2,702,700 square miles with the maximum in April and minimum in September. The sea ice is affected by wind and ocean currents, which can move and rotate very large areas of ice. Zones of compression also arise, where the ice piles up to form pack ice. Icebergs occasionally break away from northern Ellesmere Island, and icebergs are formed from glaciers in western Greenland and extreme northeastern Canada. Icebergs are not sea ice but may be coming embedded in the pack ice. Icebergs pose a hazard to ships, of which the Titanic is one of the most famous. The ocean is virtually icelocked from October to June, and the superstructure of ships are subject to icing from October to May. Before the advent of modern icebreakers, ships sailing the Arctic Ocean risked being trapped or crushed by sea ice although the Bechimo drifted through the Arctic Ocean untended for decades despite these hazards. Climate <inaudible> 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 Under the influence of the Quaternary glaciation, the Arctic Ocean is contained in a polar climate characterized by persistent cold and relatively narrow annual temperature ranges. Winters are characterized by the polar night, extreme cold, frequent low-level temperature inversions, and stable weather conditions. Cyclones are only common on the Atlantic side. Summers are characterized by continuous daylight midnight sun, and temperatures can rise above the melting point 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Cyclones are more frequent in summer and may bring rain or snow. It is cloudy year-round, with mean cloud cover ranging from 60% in winter to over 80% in summer. The temperature of the surface of the Arctic Ocean is fairly constant, near the freezing point of seawater. Because the Arctic Ocean consists of saltwater, the temperature must reach minus 1.8 degrees Celsius .8 degrees Fahrenheit before freezing occurs. The density of sea water, in contrast to fresh water, increases as it nears the freezing point and thus it tends to sink. It is generally necessary that the upper 100 to 150 meters 330 to 490 feet of ocean water cools to the freezing point for sea ice to form. In the winter the relatively warm ocean water exerts a moderating influence, even when covered by ice. This is one reason why the Arctic does not experience the extreme temperatures seen on the Antarctic continent. There is considerable seasonal variation in how much pack ice of the Arctic ice pack covers the Arctic Ocean. Much of the Arctic ice pack is also covered in snow for about 10 months of the year. The maximum snow cover is in March or April, about 20 to 50 centimeters, 7.9 to 19.7 in over the frozen ocean. The climate of the Arctic region has varied significantly in the past. As recently as 55 million years ago, during the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, the region reached an average annual temperature of 10 to 20 degrees Celsius (50 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit). The surface waters of the northernmost Arctic Ocean warmed, seasonally at least, enough to support tropical life forms, the Dinoflagellates Apectidinium augustum, requiring surface temperatures of over 22 degrees Celsius (72 degrees Fahrenheit). Animal and plant life Topic. Endangered marine species in the Arctic Ocean include walruses and whales. The area has a fragile ecosystem which is slow to change and slow to recover from disruptions or damage. Lion's mane jellyfish are abundant in the waters of the Arctic, and the banded gunnel is the only species of gunnel that lives in the ocean. The Arctic Ocean has relatively little plant life except for phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are a crucial part of the ocean and there are massive amounts of them in the Arctic, where they feed on nutrients from rivers and the currents of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. During summer, the sun is out day and night, thus enabling the phytoplankton to photosynthesize for long periods of time and reproduce quickly. However, the reverse is true in winter when they struggle to get enough light to survive. Topic. Natural resources topic. 
petroleum and natural gas fields, placer deposits, polymetallic nodules, sand and gravel aggregates, fish, seals and whales can all be found in abundance in the region. The political dead zone near the center of the sea is also the focus of a mounting dispute between the United States, Russia, Canada, Norway, and Denmark. It is significant for the global energy market because it may hold 25% or more of the world's undiscovered oil and gas resources. Environmental concerns Arctic ice melting the Arctic ice pack is thinning, and in many years there is also a seasonal hole in the ozone layer. Reduction of the area of Arctic sea ice reduces the planet's average albedo, possibly resulting in global warming in a positive feedback mechanism. Research shows that the Arctic may become ice-free for the first time in human history within a few years or by 2040. Estimates vary for when the last time the Arctic was ice-free, 65 million years ago when fossils indicate that plants existed there to as few as 5,500 years ago, ice and ocean cores going back 8,000 years to the last warm period or 125,000 during the last intraglacial period, warming temperatures in the Arctic may cause large amounts of fresh meltwater to enter the North Atlantic, possibly disrupting global ocean current patterns. Potentially severe changes in the Earth's climate might then ensue, as the extent of sea ice diminishes and sea level rises, the effect of storms such as the Great Arctic Cyclone of 2012 on open water increases, as does possible salt water damage to vegetation on shore at locations such as the Mackenzie's River Delta as stronger storm surges become more likely. Clathrate breakdown Topic. Sea ice, and the cold conditions it sustains, serves to stabilize methane deposits on and near the shoreline, preventing the clathrate breaking down and outgassing methane into the atmosphere, causing further warming. Melting of this ice may release large quantities of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas into the atmosphere, causing further warming in a strong positive feedback cycle and, marine genus and species to become extinct. Topic. Other concerns Topic. Other environmental concerns relate to the radioactive contamination of the Arctic Ocean from, for example, Russian radioactive waste dump sites in the Kara Sea and Cold War nuclear test sites such as Novaya Zemlya. In addition, Shell planned to drill exploratory wells in the Chukchi and Beaufort Seas during the summer of 2012, which environmental groups filed a lawsuit about in an attempt to protect native communities, endangered wildlife, and the Arctic Ocean in the event of a major oil spill. On the 16th of July 2015, five nations, United States of America, Russia, Canada, Norway, Denmark, Greenland, signed a declaration committing to keep their fishing vessels out of a 1.1 million square mile zone in the Central Arctic Ocean near the North Pole. The agreement calls for those nations to refrain from fishing there until there is better scientific knowledge about the marine resources and until a regulatory system is in place to protect those resources. See also References Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. Neat B. Leslie H. Discovery in Russian and Siberian Waters, 1973. ISBN 0-8214-0124-6. Ray, L., and Bacon, B., eds., The Arctic Ocean 1982 ISBN 0-333-31017-9 Thorin, Ragnar V. A., Picture Atlas of the Arctic 1969 ISBN 0-8214-0124-6 External links the Hidden Ocean Arctic 2005 Daily Logs, Photos and Video from Exploration Mission. Oceanography Image of the Day, from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution Arctic Council 
The Northern Forum Arctic Environmental Atlas Interactive Map NOAA Arctic Theme Page Arctic Great Rivers Observatory Arctic Grow Arctic Ocean The World Factbook Central Intelligence Agency Daily Arctic Ocean Rewinson data from Soviet drifting ice stations 1954 to 1990 at NSIDC NOAA North Pole webcam images from webcams deployed in spring on an ice flow NOAA Near Real-Time North Pole Weather Data Data from instruments deployed on an ice flow Search for Arctic Life Heats Up by Stephen Leahy International Polar Foundation Daily Report of Arctic Ice Cover Based on Satellite Data NSIDC.org National Snow and Ice Data Center Marine Biodiversity Wiki